record. Oh, you know what? The recording, you'll have all my audio too when you watch the recording. Oh, okay. And you'll have your little voice on the phone. <laughs> my phone might die. Well, we'll see how we do. My phone might die. All right. So let's see what you've been working on. So unfortunately, it was kind of a busy week for me. That's okay. Did, um, this was the first thing that we did. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was doing. So I just kept covering her face and wiping it away. I gave up. Okay. Because I realize I don't know what to do. Okay. And, um, with her the same way, I just had the wax. Oh, I like that I one. Just played with it. I didn't. I don't know what I was doing. I love that. I love the pink girl. I love that. I love how abstract it is. Show here. Show us again. Oh, I, See, I know I love that. Wait, I'm gonna make you the Are these photographs first. Yeah, I love how you drew in it. I love everything about this one. That's awesome. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How do you yeah. feel about that one? I had an idea, but it didn't work. Okay. But I, I guess I just don't know. Do you just use the oil sticks and rub it and hold it up again? Well, yeah, we were, well, today we're going to talk more about texture. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's all that the oil sticks do. I mean, that's, that's basically what they do is they do like a translucent color layer over the wax. And um, now some of those lines that you have in there and the holes, yeah. We, I can show you today how to put pigment stick in there, which is what we did. Did you buy um, the extender stick? Um, extender stick. Yeah. It's like, it looks like, oh yeah, look, she got the big jar. Yeah, you got, oh, blending medium. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, great. Yeah. I couldn't see any that were in the form of a tube. That's okay. No, you got the big jar. I love it. Can, you, can I borrow it? Oh, nice. Oh, those will be fun. Oh, perfect. Great. Okay, great. Love them. Okay. Do you have any like stencils or things that we can use for texture? Do you have like, get that stuff out. What do you have for stencils or um, wax texture? Yeah, get a couple things that you want to play with. Which for the new photos? Yeah, we're gonna well, we're gonna go back to the old ones and try to fix them, and then we're gonna do the new ones. So that's perfect. That'd be great. And okay. I have lace. Yeah, perfect. Or lace. Perfect. This kind of lace. Yeah. That one's gonna be too thick. I'm gonna eliminate that last one. This is, yeah, it is thick. It's not gonna work with the wax. It's gonna be too thick. It's just not gonna. You can't get the texture in there. That one might work. Yeah. Okay. And then I got some Christmas decorations. <laughs> I don't know if these sticks would do anything. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, every, everything will do something. I mean, everything will do something, whether it does what you want. Oh, that's perfect. Look, that's the one you like. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one we just used over here. Yeah, Look. Yeah. yeah we just used that. this one. Oh, okay. It's the same. This one's got... No, yeah, it's good. Look, so that's the one we used. Okay. Yeah, okay, same thing. Nice. Yeah. All right. So um, let's start back at the old one. And what I want to, I'm going to grab a board so I can demo. Yeah, I'm out of here. I'll okay. Demo. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's all we want to do. I'm still testing the microphone, but oh, did it get to come back? 
it's not back. I tested. Okay. Um, it could be on mute. Is it on mute? Yeah, it's not down here. It's not. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to use these little, these are just boards. They don't have photos on them, but I'm, I'm just going to use these boards. I'm going to demonstrate a couple techniques. So let me see if you can, okay. I'm going to move my, I'm going to switch my hot plate. Oh, I can't do that. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I want to move this over. All right. I got all my cords. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about your girl with the pink on it. With the the one that this yeah this one okay, so yeah, so I feel like what you did was you made um. You see my little workstation. Yes. Okay, so I feel like what you did was you had wax. I'm just gonna put some wax on there. And you added um, some texture. You added some texture by drawing into it. And you also look like you had some texture um, from like just the wax itself. So I wanted to show you grab your extender, grab your extender, the jar of extender. And then what happens is that like, what I see in your piece is that you drew some lines. So if I draw a line into the wax, like with a knitting needle, like this is a um, probably a skewer. So yes. if I draw lines in here, I have lines. Let's just say I draw like whatever. So I drew, I drew into the wax, right? Right. And then I also made like little, little scratch marks and maybe even like a couple little dots, right? Now I don't have your um, jar of extender. I have like an extender stick. So, and I'm gonna use a dark color. So what I have, so I have my pigment stick in a dark color and I have the extender stick. So what I can do is I can actually take the extender or take the pigment stick and rub it on the wax like this over the whole area and then I can, you could stick your finger in the jar of the blending medium and you're going to take the blending medium and you're going to rub it on the wax and what it's going to do is it's going to pull it's going to pull the pigment stick away like spread it out so it's going to thin it and spread it out and what's going to happen is that the wax the the color is going to go into the line so you want to make sure that you've pressed the um, pigment stick into the line and then you're going to use a paper towel and you're gonna remove, like remove, right? So you're gonna wipe it away. And what happens as you wipe it away is you can sort of start to see how it gets like a gradient from light to dark. And do you see how it goes into the line? So I think you should do this. And I blend, sometimes I blend it like all the way down. Right? Do you see? Yeah. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. yes. Okay. So what I want you to do is to take that piece that you just made mm -hmm. and take a dark color for the for the lines, like a dark gray or even a dark, you could use a dark brown, you could use a dark blue. And I want you to put it over the lines that you drew like in her skirt. Because I think what you were trying to do was sort of emphasize light and dark. That's what I was doing. 
Well, that's because you um, didn't really get any dark colors. In, you need to like get a dark color in there. So, so take the the a dark pigment stick and then add the extender and go over the lines and then you almost like think about like pushing pushing the color down into the line and then okay. and use the extender to spread it out because what the extender is doing is thinning the paint and then you can go ahead and wipe it with a paper towel when you feel like you've covered all the lines Is how's that look? Okay, so you, so you have to kind of press it in there. Oh no, that looks great. Yeah, that looks great. I love it. So yeah, it looks it looks great. So then you can oh careful, you can sort of wipe. You can control can control. You know, wiping it off or adding more. You can kind of control how thick or thin it is. Can I do it now? Yeah. So the idea of going like into the wax is that you've sort of made an incision or an indentation and you can fill that space with a dark color and the extender stick helps you get the dark color in there and then you know sort of move it around if that makes sense. What do you think? It's just not Okay, well, maybe be more gentle how you're wiping it. No, it is staying in there. You, you, you just have to practice. You got to kind of get it in there and then like wipe away. It's, it's like a loose surface, right? It's not like it's, it takes a little while for it to dry. So it's wet. It's a wet surface, right? Should I go over my lines again? Because maybe previously I had filled them with paint. Um, you could try that. Yeah, if you want to dig deeper in and make the lines deeper, that would help. No, I'm at work. I'm at home. So are you re-digging re the holes a little bit? Yeah, I'm trying to go over them a little bit. All right, so if you draw into them a little bit more, then you might have a little bit of a deeper space to put the pigment sticks into them. Okay. And then also when you use the paper towel, you know, you can control how much of the pigment stick you remove. Put your finger inside the paper towel like this. Like put your finger inside the paper towel. Yeah. And then you can control how much of it you're removing by how you move the paper towel.
Okay. Okay, let me see. Does it look better? Do you like the way it, well, do you like it? Do you like that technique? I do. I like it. I think it's really pretty. I, this is called, yeah, and this is called incising. So when you, okay, so yeah, so your lines maybe weren't deep enough. And so now you can make them a little bit deeper. And basically what you're doing is you're, it's almost like engraving. It's also what? It's almost like engraving. And then you can lay down a color inside the line. So you theoretically could like trace something. Clear it out oh yeah that's perfect okay great i love it i love it yeah yeah i really love it it's great and what would you do with her boots i had taken out wax before um step back from the screen i can't really see yeah i can't tell is there wax on them or no wax on them I removed a lot of the wax from the boots. Okay, well maybe hand color them a color. What color could they be? Could they be white? Like brown, light brown. Maybe? Okay, okay, so pick a brown, pick a brown. Um, we're still using the paint sticks or the other? No, I would still use the paint sticks. I wouldn't use the wax right now. Let's finish that one piece. I would just use the pigment sticks and maybe, just rub a little bit of color into the boots. Just with your finger, yeah, rub a little bit. Yeah, don't, yeah, well, right, because you're you're working in a small area and you're not blending. You're kind of trying to put it on there. So I would just put it on there very lightly and yeah, and, it, and just enough to see it. You don't want to cover up the photo because you want to be able to see that they're boots. You know what I mean? So just, put, yeah, yeah, perfect. I love it. They're great. Just leave it. Yeah, just leave it. And re it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's, you know what I mean? It's just about looking yeah. nice. It's about being art artistic. It's not a perfect medium. Yeah. You know, like it's the imperfections that I think are pretty. Something about the bottom folds that I had made. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, if you want to make them a color with the pigment stick, let's use that same process of putting the pigment stick over the holes, then adding the extender stick, and then wiping it away. So the extender stick can really take the paint down to a very, almost like very light, right? You can really get the paint to go into lots of like little nooks and crannies by using the extender stick. It's kind of like adding water to watercolors. Do you know what I mean? 
to use like a little less than what you painted. Exactly. You use a little bit less extender than what you painted and you blend it with the paint and you spread it around so that it thins out and goes into the, you know, like into the textures. Because the wax has so many um, sort of like very delicate surfaces and areas that you can't really see with your eye. So if you use the extender stick, it kind of shows off, um, you know, all those little marks. And now we're gonna, today we're gonna focus on more textures. So we're gonna make more, you know, more sophisticated, complicated textures using like the lace and the other things. So um, we'll have more stuff to paint, more texture and more detail. Okay, I'm just rubbing off the bottom times. Oh, that's fine, take your time. I have to tell you, I cannot paint for the life of me. Well, right, but we're not really we're controllable. Right, but we're painting photographs. So we're not we're not literally painting, we're painting photographs. Yeah, I think that looks great. Oh, that's beautiful. I love it. I that's my favorite piece so far. I love that one. I just think it's fabulous. Oh, thank you. I really like it. I like the way you drew that sort of um star it looks almost like an umbrella or something really fun and sort of designer right in the middle i like the pink i like the wax i love that piece do you like that piece i do i love it i'm so proud of you yeah and one of the things that's working so well is that it's not you're not trying to be literal like you're not trying to do someone's face i think faces are really hard I think imagery that's a little bit more abstract and can be have movement or design work or something like that is easier. Makes it yeah, it's really nice. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do a demo. So you're gonna watch me. I'm gonna show you how, um, I'm gonna show you how to do some um, textures. Let me grab a piece of lace. So these are some of my textures. Um, I have like the big burlapy one. Right. I have like the gar uh, grocery bag. You did that last time with um, that picture that I. Oh yeah, we did this one. Oh yeah, we did the landscapey one. We did this one. Yeah. Yes, I saw those too, but I mean, I couldn't see it. That's okay. We can do. Let me grab a piece of lace and I'll do a stencil too. Okay. Okay. And we'll also use the extender stick. I'll do a little stencil. All right, hang on. Oh, thanks for reminding me. I forgot what I did. Hey, wait, hold on. Okay, so this one will be fun. All right, so these are a little bit heavier. They, this is like um, a stencil. Oh, wow. And what I do with the stencil sometimes is I cut them up. So this was part of a bigger stencil that was like too overwhelming for me. So I cut it. And then this one is a big stencil. Uh -huh. And then this is a piece of lace. Uh -huh. Okay. Now you have to remember that my background is the wood. Okay. So I don't have a picture on here or anything, but if you're going to start those new pieces, you could go ahead and, you know, do what we did before, like you sand it with the sanding block, right? And then you wax it. So I'm just gonna use- I'm sorry. I missed that. So that block has no wax on it, right? It has nothing on it. Yeah, it's just a piece of wood. And then you're saying to sand it? No, if you're gonna start your photos, if you're gonna start your photo, you're gonna start two new pieces today. So if you start the flower one and the one of the boat, you might want to sand the paper a little bit. Oh, sand the paper. 
Do you want me to do it now? No, I'm going to do this demo and then we'll do your pieces. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to demonstrate two things. One, oh, do you have, you have encaustic paints too, right? Yes, I do. Okay. So these are the encaustic paints. This is a, this is a big one. This is a littler one. Here's a couple of them. So we haven't done these yet, right? No. Okay. All right, so we can do some of these today too. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a base coat. And so if I had a photo on here, I would do it the same. I would just put the wax on as a base coat, right? Okay. And I would just cover the whole thing. It doesn't really matter. Just get the, can be smooth. I'm gonna do this one too. And then after I put the base coat on, I'm gonna go ahead and fuse it with the heat gun. Okay. So then I'm gonna fuse it with the heat gun. Okay, and now I have to let these surfaces cool for a second. So I'm just gonna let them cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a color, I did one layer of wax. Now I'm gonna put a color of encaustic. So I'm gonna melt this directly onto my palette. It's horrible, close the door. Where's the dog? Oh, bring her in, I don't, she's wiping her, she's her. So I'm gonna mix these colors. So, oh, can you see my palette? Hang on. No. All right, there's my palette. No. Okay. So I'm mixing them together on the palette. Okay. And I just take the stick directly to the heat. Can you not play music for a second? Cause we're like having trouble with our audio. Okay, thank you. And then I can mix these colors together. So I made like a light blue. So I blended the- I did, I put a little bit of wax medium in it just to make it a little bit lighter, like more, so the more wax, the more wax medium you add, the more translucent. Because these paints, yeah, these paints are very, oh, very thick. Okay, so I'm gonna brush the wax, I'm gonna brush it on. And then I'm just gonna cover the whole thing like light blue. So I just made like a blue tile. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful blue. I know it's like Tiffany blue. I know, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and fuse it. And that's gonna make it like get rid of the, it's gonna make it smooth, right? So it's nice, a really nice pretty blue tile. Now, I could do anything to it now. So if I wanted to, I could scrape it with a razor blade. Let me see if I can find my razor blade. Hold on, I lost my razor blade here. One second, I'll be right back. I need to get a blade. Okay. I don't know where they all So you want to make sure that your um, razor blade is, I use these little, these little ones. Can you see it? Right. I got those too. Yeah. I just use these painter blades. And sometimes what I do is I heat it up just to clean it. And then I can use a palette knife or a paint scraper just to make sure that there's no wax on the end of the blade. So I clean it. Okay. And then what I can do is just scrape gently over the surface of the encaustic paint. And what it'll do is it'll just randomly like light lighten it. Now, if I had a photo under here, I could scrape back to see the photo, right? Uh -huh. You start seeing it. Yeah, you'll start seeing it. So as you're scraping back, wherever you see like the the paint lighten up is like where you would see through to the photo. 
And then the other thing you can do is that you can add more wax medium to um, the encaustic to make it more translucent. So if you've ever done any watercolor painting, it's similar. So the more wax you add, the thinner the paint gets. Okay, so do you see how I lightened it? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Also notice on the razor blade, there's quite a bit of wax there. So I can, I can take this off. I can put this back on the hot plate and remelt it if I want to. I can clean my blade on the, on the thing again. All right, yeah. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another color and I'm gonna do a, a texture. So I'm gonna add this like, make it a late, let me make it a late, late beige brown, I guess. All right, I'm gonna do this stencil. So here's my paint. And I'm gonna go right over the top of the other, of the other paint. And if I wanted to change the color, I could change the color. And notice I'm not brushing. What am I doing with the brush? I'm going on its side and I'm doing what? Do you remember what I called that? Dabbing. Dabbing, yay. <laughs> right, and this is cool too. You can actually do like little like polka dot things. You could do like little spots. Okay, I did the dabbing. So then. So it kind of looks like that. Now I'm gonna wait till this cools, right? And then I'm gonna pull it off. Okay, so, so now I have a bunch of options because I have um, this really interesting stencil texture. The next thing I need to do is fuse it, right? So I need to make sure that these two layers are um, secure. So I just need to hit it with the heat gun so that I know that this layer of wax is gonna stay on there. Okay, so I fused it. I didn't melt the texture, right? Yeah. I'm gonna put it, um, oh wait, hold on. Let me see if it'll make me bigger. Okay. Oh, that's great. You can see it really well. So you, can you see, you can see that it has dimension. Okay, you can see the little dots. So it's really pretty. Okay. So now I have, now I have a couple options. So one of my options is that I can um, add pigment stick to it just like we did um, before. So the pigment stick would go on it and around it. So let's see what, I don't know what color. Let's see what color. Okay, let's do dark blue. Or we could do gray, I'll just do dark blue, okay. So I'm gonna add a lot of pigment stick and I'm just gonna kind of cover it you know, using the extender. I'm going to, yeah. Oh, after you put it on. Yeah, I always do. I always do the pigment stick first. Oh. And then I add the extender. I never add the extender first. I always add the pigment stick first. Oh, I was doing it on my palette, mixing them up together. No, I usually just add it. I usually, no, I don't. Uh, that's, I mean, I don't think it matters. I don't, I don't know. But I, I don't think it matters. It's fine. Try try it your way and try it my way. Whatever way makes you happy. I don't. I I think you whatever. I'm gonna. So I just shifted. I added a little bit of green. Just to kind of give it like a more than one color. Okay, and I'm gonna add. So I added a little bit of sap green, and I had the dark blue. Now I have a question. Sure. Generally speaking, if there was a photograph underneath it, mm -hmm. are you trying to kind of duplicate with these what is underneath it? Like That's a really good question. Yes. 
So yes, in my work, that's a really good question. So in my work, I generally put stencils um, over flowers that already exist or over like a dress or something that could have a pattern, I add a pattern. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so here, here's, the, here's the extender stick and I'm rubbing it all over. I'm rubbing it all over and using my fingers and I'm, I don't really know where this is going. I'm just doing it and then I'm gonna add the paper towel, okay? So also, it looks like stained glass. Yeah. So that's what it looks like right now. Yeah. And I don't love it, but I think once I start to rub, remove it a little bit, this is, I think, where it gets kind of cool is that you don't have to, you can selectively, you know, you can select where you're going to remove, remove it. So what will happen is that a lot of the color will go around the stencil, almost like an outline. Yeah, exactly like a stained glass. You're exactly right. I never really, I, you're, you're talking about like the, um, the lead that goes around the glass. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it kind of did that. It kind of filled in the spaces around the outside of, the wax stencil and it didn't and I because it, it wiped off the surface so I could go ahead and add like a different color I mean technically all of these raised surfaces I could now like hand color if that makes sense so rather than pushing the paint in and around I can just stay on top now I'm going to do this same thing again I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm gonna do it with wax and wax. So instead of doing it with wax and pigment stick, I'm gonna do it with wax and wax. Is that, okay, so I'll show you. It's just fun to, I think it's really good practice to sort of practice this type of thing off of, um, without a photo, if that makes sense. Because then you can kind of figure out. Right. So for me, like I would use something like this on a, on somebody's dress or like, um, or on their, if they were like had flowers on their hair, I would use this technique or maybe even, um, um, as a background, like around somebody. So you can kind of think of it. Is it on, is it like, is it on the picture? Is it behind the scene? Is it, so if you had like, you can just kind of decide where and how you would want to use a raised, a raised surface. So you could call this like a raised surface. And then you could hand color because you have all this dimension. It's like you can color around it. And the nice thing about the pigment sticks, I think is that you can really blend the colors. Right, I mean, and again, like we don't know, this could go this way. Yes, very nice. Right, and then technically something we have not talked about, you and I have not talked about, but so what if your photo was small and then you did all of this like cool encaustic work around the photo? So don't feel like your photo always has to fit, like what I call fill the frame. Okay. Okay. So it could, they could be like, um, they could be, the photo could be smaller and then the wax pattern could be. All right, so let's do the same thing again. I'm gonna get some different colors. Let me get, I have like, I'm gonna do a light color and a dark. I'm gonna do a light color and a dark color. Hold on. This is my bag of wax. I'm gonna do this pretty. What? I got them all in a bag. I was afraid they would touch each other and they would mix the colors, but it doesn't matter. No, they're pretty hard. I mean, they're they're hard. They're solid. 
they're more like chunks of they're like because they have resin in them they're pretty solid all right so let's do i'll do um i'm gonna do like a pink i'm gonna do like a pink layer this is pretty this is like a bubble gum color i know it's like bubble gum <laughs> I, I know, I'm like, I'm only like, I, I act like a little kid. It's a little, I'm only 12. <laughs> My color palette is 12, 12 year old. All right. So let's try, um, let's try a lace. Now, sometimes with this layering technique, it's good to use contrasty colors. Why, why would I say that, do you think? Well, so it can show when you right, right. If you use colors, right. If you do a lot of a lot of texture in similar colors, it's harder to see what you're doing. So I'm going to try this lace. And the reason that I fuse it too is um, when you're doing a lot of texture, you want your layer to be flat that so you're putting the texture on. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to let that cool and then I'm going to use the razor blade. I'm going to use the razor blade to scrape this one down a little bit. Okay. You always use a razor blade after with it. I do. I like them. I like the layers to look um slightly integrated and and blended together so i think that the razor blade helps them look good together yeah it also guarantees me that it's flat right so using the razor blade guarantees do you know what happens with me when i use the razor blade what happens like it doesn't Go smoothly gets me rigid. Um, okay, so there's a you just have to practice, and I think that you're putting too much pressure. You're pressing too hard. So I see this a lot, and I'm I I'm just literally like skimming over it, and I'm not pressing down. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So I shouldn't have a strong hand. Exactly. If you're forcing it and you're pressing too hard, that's where you get the little. The little nicks and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty smooth. All right. So I'm going to do the lace. Now, the lace, I use the lace a lot, especially on the women or as um, some type of, of texture, right? The, the nice thing about the lace, too, is that you can lay it on the wax and you can press it in a little bit and it'll stick to it. So that's nice because it means that um, it'll stay still. While you do that. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna use a nice dark color. This is like really, oh my gosh. I'm gonna do like a bluey black. Liam McDonald. I don't know how long I've been waiting for this. Ah. <laughs> to meet you and to have a class with you. Oh, you're so, with your work. you're so sweet. Well, There's something about it that really speaks to me. Oh, so well, you need to, you need a, you, need, you should buy a piece of artwork then. <laughs> you need a piece of art in your house. Oh, yeah. Well, I have a ways to go. <laughs> Oh, you can, I have a lot, I have, you should have a piece of my artwork though with you. I know. All right, so this is, this is that pretty blue color that I just made. And again, I'm not trying to brush it. I'm definitely, definitely dabbing it, right? And you have more than one color mixed in there or is it just- I did a blue and a black. I usually mix, I usually mix two or three colors together. I'd never go really, straight off the stick and I usually mix two or three together. 
So I dabbed the wax all over it and then I'm going to go ahead and let it sit. So it totally needs to cool down, right? Yes. And the lace is in there. And then when I feel, I don't want it to sit for an hour, you know, just a few minutes. And then I'm going to, I'm going to pull up. Right. And I, I it's pulling some chunks out of it. Right. Which is fine. Yeah. Because I don't ever mind. See, I lost a piece here. Now I could try to save it by like with my finger, but I don't really mind that I lose those pieces. Um, if I'd used a palette knife, I probably could have secured them back in. Um, but I don't get too picky about something like they're like right here. Let's see if I can get it back. Maybe I can press it. So sometimes if you just use a, a pottery tool like this and you press down on it, you can get it to come off. It just depends. I might make it worse. Oh, I got a little bit of it. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Oh, I got it back. Okay. So I only lost, I, I got a little bit of it back. So this always looks pretty, I think, especially when it's two contrasty colors and the lace always looks nice because it's sort of abstract. It looks like an, uh, like, um, an oriental rug. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we have a couple options. We can, um, we can fuse it a little bit. It's funny, it looks like tiny little like flakes. And again, I don't wanna lose the pattern, so I don't, want to overfuse it but i want it, i don't want it to fall off either right so you're fusing um for two reasons one is to secure it and to um to soften it a little bit so that's like you're doing two things with the fusing okay so this is what it looks like now so i have a couple options i could do another coat of encaustic on it um, which could be fun, or I can do pigment sticks on it. So which would you prefer? You pick. What was the second option? I can either put in, uh, pigment sticks on it, or I can layer another layer of encaustic over top of it. Um, encaustic on top of it, see what happens. Okay, so that's like making a sandwich, right? So we have pink, blue, and we have to pick another contrasty color. So we'll do like a nice like um, cream. Okay, so we'll do it. We'll do a nice like whitey. It's not bright white, but it's kind of like off white. And we could put a little bit of, um, we could put a little bit of pink in it. All right, so I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use one of these brushes. I need some wax medium in it to extend it. So I'm gonna use this brush. And I'm going to add, can you see how I'm adding the wax medium to the paint? Yes. Okay. Instead of the other um, extenders, right? Yeah, you can't use the other extender. You have to use the wax medium. The other extender is really only for, um, it's only for the pigment sticks. Okay. I have to this well, you're going to watch it. You can watch it again. Just enjoy. You've got the recording. Okay, yeah, that's true. You're gonna have the recording, so you don't have to write it down right now. I mean, if you want to, you can. Yeah. So the nice thing about this is that again, like I'm filling the whole, I'm cover, I'm like burying, right? So think about, think about burying your fossil, right? Like it's like a treasure. Um. I'm gonna add a little yellow to it. it. Needs a little yellow, I think. I was waiting for you to add your other colors. <laughs> I just added a little bit of yellow. The yellow is gonna be really pretty. I should have added the yellow before. So it's almost like cooking, you know, like you kind of like set these things and then you have to like wait. All right, and also I'm gonna fuse it. Um, 
I forgot where my gun was. Okay, so it kind of looks like a hot mess right now, right? Like what, it doesn't look like anything. So I'm gonna prepare my next step, which is gonna to be to um, use the razor blade and scrape back, hopefully scrape back to the lace. Okay, I gotta take a, just a picture. Hold on. All right, so let's see, my razor blades are here. I'm gonna make sure my razor blades are clean. And this you have to do very gently. So if you press too hard, you're just gonna take it all off. I might have to run inside and grab a phone charger. But you're gonna start to see, you know, as you're scraping, you'll start to see the pattern come through the layer of the wax. You're just trying to give your photo some dimensions and some work and colors. Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to give it like interesting and caustic texture around around in the background or on, on people's clothing or in their hair. I mean, I'll often go like right over the subject matter with this type of stuff and then dig, dig back. Yeah. I mean, this one is looking really beautiful. I like the yellow that we added. And look, it's so interesting too. Like we just did a couple different techniques and they look so different. Well, I like this one because it's smooth. I actually, um, I don't mind the stencil texture, but I definitely like, this is my favorite. Which one? This one. Because it's smooth, you said? Yeah, and it's it's just so beautiful. It's so, it's such a, um, it's such a complicated texture, but it's so smooth. It's the hardest one though. This one takes a lot of practice. All right, I'll hold them up in a second. I use all three techniques though in all of my work. Like if you're using the pigment stick, would you on the same um, board use these, stick, these paints, paints? Yeah, you have to just go in the right order. So this is what that... Do you like it? Wow. It has so much soul. <laughs> yeah, it's like a fossil, right? Yes. It's very beautiful. And it's totally flat. So look, here's all here's all three. That's something, yeah. So the blue one was with um, this was with a stencil. Pigment stick and uh, extender. Yep, Exten a stencil. Yep, uh, pigment stick. I'll take picture of them. This was stencil, this was wax and then stencil and then um, extender and pigment That's stick. Really this one was just, um, this one was just, uh, was the incising. And the and the pigment sticks. Oh, was that you? I'm just declined. Oh, was that your phone? Yes. I might have to run inside and get my phone charger. Okay, so what I think you should do now is go ahead and put a layer of wax. Sounded. 
first, right? What? You wanted me to sand it first? Oh, sand your photos? Yeah, and then put a layer of uh, the wax medium on them. I'm going to go run and grab my phone. Okay. Sure. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to disconnect for a second. I'll call you back in a, in a minute. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> All right. What's up, Chippy? Huh? <laughs> What's up? Chippy. Thank God. Thank God he did something. Thank God he did something. Hello? Oh, I got that. 
Yeah. There's like, this is so interesting. I'm gonna send you, some, it's so interesting the different techniques, like how, um, how different they are, you know? Like, I still really love this. And this is the easiest one to do. This is what you just did yeah, last week. This is what you just did. Yeah. So it's just wax and uh, pigment stick. Pigment stick. Uh -huh. and, and I did the incising. So I drew into the wax with a needle. The beautiful colors, yeah. Right, well that, and right. So it's mostly translucent, like the pigment sticks go on like super light like translucent, right? Mm -hmm, right. And I can kind of see back to the wood color. You know, it's very gentle. It's like skin. It's like, um, this is a little bit like heavier. And like you said, it was, it's like a little bit like a stained glass. It's, it's much more um, contrived. It was more, it's sharper. Now I could soften this. How would I soften this? Um, would you put a lighter color on top? I could put another layer of wax on it or I could um, scrape it. Okay. Well, what happens if I scrape it? Let's see. I mean, the scraping is going to soften the lines and it's going to reduce the um, sharpness. So it's like what we talked about before about how these techniques kind of speak to photography, right? Like focus and blur. So totally different, and right? And what's the white that I see on the pieces? Is that the paint you had before? That was this that was the paint that we used for the stencil. Yeah. Yeah, so it just it got lighter. I mean, whatever. And look, now I'm blending it a little bit with the but it's so much prettier now. It's just not as like it's just not as harsh. Right. It's soft, it's softer. You know, and it, it is really, I think this, this is like a funny art form because it's a lot about addition and subtraction, you know, kind of like adding, adding and taking away, you know, and it's like you, you have to just kind of keep going until you get it right. You know, I could imagine like, it looks like a top of a tree too. It looks like the top of a tree. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like this is the, oh, this is the truth. Huh? Yeah. That's the trunk. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's interesting. Well, right. And, but that's, but that's sort of like the beauty of abstraction. You know what I mean? It's like when something is abstract, it, when something's abstract and your mind can just, you know, fill, fill in the, fill in the detail, you know, you make it up. Right. All right, did you um, wax your pieces? I did. Okay, so let's try, let me try to help you. What, happened. what? Okay. What happened? Wait, let me switch you to the big. I was big... gonna say, I had my girl that I had finished her hair and everything uh -huh. under the pancake thing. And I pulled it out, it had all melted. What? Okay. Yeah. What do you mean? Let me see. Melted? Being under the griddle? She just got melted. Wait, hang on, I can't. Well, use your heat gun and fix it. Let me say, let me say, let me say, hold it up. Wait, hold it up again. Oh yeah, use your, just, I use your heat, use your scraper tool and just scrape that off her eye. Just scrape, yeah, just scrape that whole thing off. It might be better. I mean, then fix it. 
Scrape it off with the scraper gently. I mean, I once had a I once had a piece of art that I left in my car and I had to go into the house and one of the kids had one of the kids had like stuck their arm through a window or something and I was like I totally forgot about it and it melted and I just took it I took it and put it on the floor and it cooled down. And then I just repainted it a little bit. It was fine. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. That's what I was just yeah, talking. I, I should have known I shouldn't keep it under the Yeah, you should probably put your finished artworks. You should probably put your finished artworks like somewhere safe. Um, Right, but it's just what we were just talking about too, you know, that whole idea of sort of addition and subtraction, you know. Right. And it is an imperfect medium, so it's going to have like a reaction to, you know, he, it's going to have just, it's going to be hard to make it do exactly what you want it to do. Right, it's a lot about acceptance. Right, it's about letting go. Not perfection. Yep, it's about letting go. It's about allowing things to happen organically. It's about non judgment. Right, it's about a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes the wax just wants to do, you know, you can't force it. You can't force it to do something it doesn't want to do. And sometimes like out of, uh, let's, did you scrape it? Let's see. I mean, it's not good, but I have to work on it. Yeah. 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 Okay, so just go ahead and scrape that thing off her nose. Scrape, yes, and it's better. Her face is better. I mean, maybe, you, yeah, I think it's gonna be better. Scrape that thing off her nose, yep. And then scrape that little bit off her head and then go ahead and, um, we can fit, you can work on it later, but you'll fix it. It's going to be fine. It, it, it's good. It has to be fine. What? I'm sure. Yeah, don't put anything near your burner. That's a good idea. So I did put wax over this one. Let me say. I think it could use another layer. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Yeah, you have a lot of holes. Yeah, you have a lot of holes and stuff. Go ahead and put another layer on there. You want to make sure that like all of your openings are kind of closed, you know.
And don't forget, like you don't always have to go, especially with your arm and stuff, you don't always have to go in one direction, right? So you can go side, whatever you can go. Yeah, you can go whatever way works for you. Okay. Just remember, don't feel, don't feel like you have to go one way. Right? Go whichever way your arm wants to go. Yeah, don't let your, yeah, let your, let your intuition and your arm go where it's comfortable. I like fuse it and try to smooth it with the fusing. Yeah, I, I fuse every layer and I razor blade. Yeah, every once in a while. I just, it's a good practice. Oh, I didn't fuse the first layer. That's okay. Fuse it now. It's not a problem. No, not a problem. And then once you feel like you have a nice even surface, then we can talk about what you're going to add next. Okay, I'm going to try to use the right of light. So what you can add next is like um, a stencil or um, some lace or a texture, right? So then you can start thinking like, okay, once I have my base coat, what can I add next, right? Wait, I'm gonna call you right back, okay? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Hello? Hey. I'm still teaching, what's up? No, what's up? Uh-oh. Does it have a pool? Ew. Yeah, we might have to spend the money at the Y. I'm totally, I'm totally happy putting some money towards your Y thing, honey. No, it's worth it. And you know what? Can we? Uh, are you coming home? <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, maybe there's one in the city. Did you look in the city? Um, all right, let's, let's, I think the croc, when they, did you ever find out when they were going to get there? Let's call, can we, are you coming home? All right, I love you. I'll see you in a little bit. Let me finish my class. Okay. All right. Okay. Hello. Hey, that was my, sorry, that was my kid. My kid, my big kid, my child, my large. 
um, my one is how he lives with us. He's like 20. That was my 20 some, he's 20 something. He, and my other one's in college. Yep. One is home living with us and one is in college. Would you just have, do you have more than one daughter? I'm sorry. Oh, do you have more than one daughter? Yeah, I have two daughters and one. Oh, okay. Yeah, only one is married. One is married. How how are they? How old are they? Um, my oldest is thirty-eight. Okay. And my youngest is thirty-one. They've got time, so. Yeah, the thirty-eight. Oh, that's great. It's the best. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah I love that. Good. Especially with the pandemic and everything, we've got so close. No. Because we don't go anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there aren't as many distractions. Great. So I'm trying to think of um, extras you said. Okay, so think about maybe look at your, what I do is I usually look at my stencils or what I have around me and then I lay them down on top of it to kind of see what I like. So you're gonna go, you know, you're gonna start going into like abstraction. So you need to think about, you know, what, what you're, what, you're gonna to need to tell like a little story, you know, you're gonna to need to tell, like use the texture and have fun with it. You know, I had, I wasn't sure what I was buying. Uh -huh. You had asked me, they're called, um... Yeah, those are regular, those are good, those are stencils. These are stencils, I haven't even, oh, it says stencils. Yeah, they're great. Micro or something? Oh, I don't know. They're going to be fine. Yeah. They look fun. Okay. Those are perfect. Would you like, would you, in addition to the other things, add leaves as a stencil and remove it? Um, well, you need to decide, you, you kind of need to make a game plan. Like what, what is your, what's your game plan with the piece? Do you want it to be like all floral? Are you gonna, I would work from the center. I would work from the center out. So um, I wouldn't put just random stuff everywhere. Right. I would kind of start um, with the flowers and maybe add more flowers around and then see what happens if you like it. I think that like having a compositional balance is important. And I think just putting the those leaves like straight across the bottom isn't really going to do anything for you. Right. 
I would just add flowers where there already are flowers. And if anything, I would go up, I wouldn't go down. Yeah. So, cause flowers but kind of grow. Add flowers, you mean stencil flowers? Yeah, or designs. I mean, your the piece that you chose, that image isn't really specific. Like it doesn't have a person in it. It doesn't have like a flower pot. It's sort of an abstraction. So technically, it, it, you don't have to deal with reasoning. Like you could just kind of do whatever. It's very open ended, right? Okay, so you just can kind of practice. I, I think it's the perfect kind of piece to just sort of practice your um, ideas and your techniques and not really worry so much about what it looks like. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I was thinking perhaps this in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you need to practice your stencils. That's a great idea. Okay. And then maybe it, like if you have a, flor a floral stencil or something else, you can add it. Yeah, and they, well, don't, yeah, you need to add more wax, remember? Oh, before I put it on? No, you can lay the stencil on there. The, the stencil, yeah, the stencil's not going to stick to the wax. You have to add wax. Okay. Only the lace, the lace sticks to the stencil, or to the, the lace sticks to the wax, rather. You're not going to get that. Yeah. So just cover. So dab. Yep. So go over the stencil. Yep. And then you can let it cool for a second and then you can pull it up and see what it looks like. How does it look? Kind of neat. Kind of neat? Okay. So play around with like, oh, I love it. Good. So um, fuse it a little bit. So go through each of the steps of the process, right? So fuse it a little bit. And yet not too much, you don't want to get rid of it, right? You don't want to scare it away, so to speak. <laughs> don't yeah, don't good. Okay, yeah, you don't want to ghost it. And then now you can scrape it if you feel like it's too sharp and you want to blur it a little bit or blend it a little bit, you could add, you could scrape it with a razor blade or you can just go ahead, if you like it, you could just go ahead and add um, another stencil somewhere else. Okay. How do you feel about it? I'm trying to imagine I would, what kind of stencil I would add. Well, do you have anything maybe, that? Uh, maybe this guy. Okay. Do you have anything that's like more, do you have anything that's more like a, a flower? Do you have anything that's like a flower? 
or have something like yeah i don't know how it's gonna oh yeah that's nice okay so put some of those you think that'll read like a flower maybe it's kind of small but try it i would put them on the flowers or near the flowers also sometimes what i do for flowers is i um actually use the brush to make a flower so i put the i use the brush on its side or corner to kind of like make a flower petal so literally like um i can kind of demonstrate it if you want me to i think i'm not ready for that okay that's fine Well, sometimes you need to like, even though you have flowers underneath, I feel like you need a little flower. You need like shapes of flowers or like suggestions of flowers. They, they don't have to be literal. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I... And that it's just like, if you don't have a stencil that looks like a flower, you can just kind of add um, an abstract shape using the brush. If that makes sense. So you can kind of like paint a flower almost. How's that? I was going to put a little more on the other side too. Okay. But it has wax on it. I'm trying to melt the wax. What has wax on it? The lace. Oh, okay. Yeah, the uh, you can put it right on the hot plate and melt it. Or you can hit it with the heat gun to soften it. If it's too... Too waxy. Yeah, if it's too waxy, that happens. Okay, so and um sometimes yeah, it's hard to use the lace if it gets too stiff. So you want to like keep it, yeah, you can lay it flat on the hot plate. I put it on the hot plate. Yeah. So yeah, let it loosen yeah. up. Well, that's why that's why I was suggesting. Yeah, that's why I was suggesting. I was suggesting that you do that you kind of figure out what what flowers you want to keep in the picture. So when you look at the picture, like, what parts do you want to be photographic? And what parts do you want to be waxy? Okay. Does that make sense?
But when you say waxy, you still see it, right? Well, you can do both. You can do a little bit of both. You could do covered up, right? Or you can do, and you can do solid colors, or you can do like translucent colors. You kind of need to make a little bit of what I call um, like a game a game plan. Does that make sense? Like where you're you're like, oh, this can come. So what happens? The wax brings part of the image forward, right? Because wax has wax is thick, so it comes forward, and then where the photo is is going back. So you want to start to think about sort of like, uh, okay, so then you need to, right, so that's fine. So you need to heat it with a heat gun or razor blade it. Okay, so I'll show you what it did. Okay. Let me see. Okay, so yeah, so that's a lot of texture. So what you could do yeah. is, um, Hey, wait, let me see that again. I'm going to pin you. Hold on. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't know why. All right, it won't let me make you bigger. So, yeah, that's a. I. So, what I would do is scrape away where the flowers are. Do you see the leaf? Yes, yeah, scrape away where the flower is. And then that green leaf, scrape away where the green leaf is. No, the big one, this one. Yeah, that one. So that that's, you can see that. And let the little dots be in the center. And then, so these guys, I shouldn't paint in between them. I think you could put a layer of encaustic wax on that, on the background. What color do you want the background to be? light pink or cream or okay yellow. so you so you could make it on the palette like we made it and cover over the wax the only thing is is that you did that you did that wax pattern in medium and not in paint so it's just going to be clear it's not going to have a color say that again i did this you did the texture with wax medium you didn't do the texture with um, a colored encaustic stick you didn't do it with a color. I didn't use the medium on here, right? Yeah, you used the medium. You didn't use a paint color, did you? Did you use a pinky? I didn't use any color. Yeah. So I think what you need to do is add some texture with some colors um, so that you have like another conversation besides white. Like the only thing that you have now is texture and white. Right but maybe dig out some of the photo first, like dig out the leaf, okay. like clear out, maybe with a pottery tool. Okay. And okay. then maybe add, you could add a layer of color. Do you remember how we added the layers of color for the little, this thing? Yeah, I think you just melted it. Yeah, and then we just literally painted yeah. it over and then scraped back with a razor blade. Yeah, I think you need to scrape some of that back first. Yeah.
Okay, let's see. Let's have a look. So we only have a few more minutes. So let's try to put a wax layer on it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I know two hours went by. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, very nice. Good. So let's try. Yeah, let's try a light pink color at the top. I wouldn't do the whole thing. Let's try. Let's try like a light. Like a light pink color. Yeah, like some type of creamy color. Yeah, I love that color. Yeah. Oh my God. I love wax. Yeah, I love that color. Um, yeah, mix it with another color. I think it's good to like lighten them or darken them to mix them together. I think they look pretty. So what happens is when I put my brush back into the wax container uh -huh. and it has paint, again. You have to when I put the brush back into the wax container. Uh-huh. It has paint on it, so. Right. So now you've contaminated your medium, but that's fine. You can use all the medium. It's gonna, yeah, you have to clean the brushes or keep the brushes separate. So you really should have like maybe even one brush um, for painting and one brush for medium. So you know what I'm saying? And then don't put the brush with the paint in the but in the pot with the medium that will contaminate it. Right. Right. So, okay. Yeah, so it's almost like you have to introduce an extra brush. Um, did you did you brush it on there? Brush like a, oh yeah i would go a little bit yeah a little bit more because it has a lot of wax that's why yeah you need a lot of wax you want a lot of wax um, that's what you want you want a lot of wax if you don't have enough wax you won't cover anything you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I was mixing the pigment stick. Right. No, you don't want to use, you want to use the encaustic paint. Yes, I used the wrong thing. Okay. Well, you. My pigment stick was next to me. I wanted white. Oh, okay. Yeah, one is mushy. I mean, technically, you can put the pigment sticks into the wax. It's not, it's not, it's okay for them to mix together. It's all right. That's okay. No harm done.
Okay, then once you get out on there, go ahead and fuse it. And then let it cool for a second and then razor blade it. Do you feel like you got some type of a smooth surface? It's pretty thick and unsmooth. Well, it's not right now. You're not sure if it's smooth? No, you can go ahead. No, start razor blading very gently. See if you can get something to come off. Yes? Okay. How's it going? So the idea is that you're trying to get to like some type of smooth surface, right? Well, I thought the um, maze was gonna give a dimension, but now we're gonna do the smoother surface. All right, let's see. Let, let's see if I can help you. I can't. Okay. Oh yeah, that's nice. I think it's nice. And then what, you know what you can do is that when you get it a little bit smoother, you can take the pigment stick um, and the extender and fill it. You can get a really nice texture from all of those holes and stuff. Oh, and like bring it down here, you think? Like go like this and like that? Yeah. Translucent. Yeah, you have to think like what, Maybe that whole, all of the white should be like a color. Like I like the pink or like, yeah, all over or another color, some other color. Um, like okay. a, maybe a little bit of a brown could be nice. I don't know, some other color. Okay, would you do any color in here? Um, well, you're gonna hand color. I think you should hand paint those flowers up with the pigment stick. I would leave the flowers in the center alone. I wouldn't, I would color in the background around the flowers and then you're gonna hand paint the flowers. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you mentioned pigment stick only for the flowers, but the background I'll do. I think you should try to do the background with the encaustic. Yeah, I think you should try to like layer it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Yeah, and I think okay. that'll be good. All right, so um, did you decide, Wait, I'm gonna turn the recording off. So that was great.